welcome to part 3 in the video series about what porn does to your brain. If you just stumbled upon this video, I urge you to go and watch part 1 and part 2 first, and then come back to this one, because <laughs> otherwise you won't have a clue about what we are talking about here. So, in the last video we talked about sensitization and hypofrontality, and you learned that sensitization is a brain change that never really goes away fully, even if you quit using whatever you are addicted to. But here it is important to point out that even though the sensitized pathways remain, it is still possible to have a wonderful life after your addiction. And again, it's not like you are doomed to a lifelong struggle with super powerful cravings either, but it is true that you will probably always have to be a bit careful with triggers in order to not relapse. I like the way Noah Church puts it. Think back of how it was trying to learn how to ride a bicycle. In the beginning it was very difficult, right? Yes, but once you mastered the skill and became good at it, it became easy. But you still have to keep your eyes open in order not to crash into something. Well, it's a bit like that with the sensitized pathways. Even though you get skillful at handling your triggers, you still have to keep your eyes open and take it seriously in order not not to crash into a relapse. Yeah, that's a pretty good analogy right there, so thank you Noah for that. Alright, so the last brain change is a malfunctioning stress system. If you have developed real addiction related brain changes, in other words, if you have a real addiction to something, you are going to be more sensitive to stress. And you are going to get stressed out more easily than others. And on top of that, when you are getting stressed, you are also much more vulnerable to relapses. And this brain change is yet another reason for why people who watch a lot of porn can develop anxiety problems. Now here's the deal, when you develop an addiction, that addiction is going to hijack your dopamine system, and because of that your brain is going to believe that your addiction is vital for survival. This is also why people can get real withdrawal symptoms when they give up the porn, because the stress system can start protesting violently. Because your brain thinks that what you are doing now when you are quitting is a threat to your survival. So even though many many porn addicts are struggling with stress and anxiety while they are addicted and while they are using the porn, you need to know that it can get even worse for a period of time after quitting, before it calms down and you finally start to feel much much better. And a whole lot better than when you were using the porn. Now it's different for everyone, but this often takes about a month or two before the strongest withdrawals come down. For some they go away quicker than that, and for others they can last quite a bit longer. The key thing to remember here though is that right after quitting it often gets worse before it gets better. And that includes your libido and erection problems as well, if porn made you struggle with that. So you can get a complete drop in libido for a few weeks after quitting. Now that period is called the flat line in the porn addiction community. But just like with the withdrawal symptoms, it's important to know that this is just a temporary phase and that once you get out of it, the anxiety will go away and your libido will come back. So not only will the withdrawal symptoms go away, but you will start to feel so much better than you did back when you were using the porn. And your libido will come back in a good way, so that you once again get to enjoy having a strong and healthy libido for real life people, with good quality erections. Alright, so now that we have talked about the four addiction related brain changes, to really drive home the point in a fun and educational way here, like the great Gary Wilson said, this is what the four brain changes would say if they could speak. Desensitization would say, 
I can't get no satisfaction. And then the sensitized pathways would instantly poke you in the shoulder and go, Hey, I got just what you need. And the stress system would scream, I need something to take the edge off now. And finally, hypofrontality would sigh and say, Bad idea, but I just don't have the energy to stop you right now. Yeah, and so when you combine all of this, you really have a nasty package that works against your good intentions. And for those of you who have been trying to quit for a while, now you also understand why it's so easy to relapse back to using porn again. But you have to understand that it is fully possible to quit using porn. If I could do it, you can do it. And hundreds of thousands of others have done it as well. And if you've been struggling with a lot of the negative things I mentioned in part one, and if porn is the cause of those negative things for you, then you should be excited about finding out about this. Because that means that you can also get rid of those things and that you can't yet even comprehend and how good you can start feeling when doing so. You know, every single day we hear this from guys who have given up the porn. How amazingly good they start feeling. And not just guys, but from more and more people, men and women, every single day. Here's just what one of those guys has to say. Quote, I feel like the next Sir Isaac Newton or Leonardo da Vinci. Since I quit a month ago, I literally started a business, taken up the piano, been studying French every day, been programming, drawing, and I have more awesome ideas than I know what to do with. My confidence is sky high. I already feel like I can talk to any girl. And I'm the same guy who took two and a half extra years to graduate from college because of procrastination and depression, unquote. Isn't that beautiful? Now, I do have to say that that guy started seeing the benefits a bit sooner than most people. But that just goes to show that we are all different, just like I already mentioned. And when it comes to myself and the problems I were struggling with back in my porn days, if any of you are wondering, yes, I am 100% recovered today and everything works just as it's supposed to work, (laughs) if you know what I mean. Now, in order to reverse these brain changes, the number one most important thing you should be doing is, of course, to remove the very thing that caused the brain changes in the first place. In other words, you have to stop using the porn. Now, there are other things you can do in addition to that to potentially help speed things up a bit. And I'll talk more about that in just a moment. But you have to understand that the main thing for you to do if you want to reverse these brain changes is to stop using the porn. Now, you can still have normal sex with real life people and you can still do porn free masturbation and still recover from a porn addiction just fine. However, with a small caveat here. For those of you who are struggling with porn induced ED, you should know that even though masturbation in and of itself cannot cause ED, many guys tend to recover from PIED faster if they also take a temporary break from masturbation. And then once they regain their ability to have a strong erection and libido for real life people, some of them start masturbating again. But without the porn, of course. You do not want to go back to porn because porn was the very thing that caused all of these problems in the first place. So if you now are wondering if you are addicted to porn or not, and perhaps you might need some helpful tips on how to quit, then you should download my free 
90 day no porn advice and tool guide right now by using the link under the video. In the end of that guide, there is also a link to a porn addiction test you can take to find out where you stand. You see, as someone who has been involved in the porn addiction community now for more than 11 years, I consider myself somewhat of an expert on this. So you should really consider getting this guide. And it's totally free, so go ahead and download that guide right now by using the link under the video. Now it's not a big online course or anything like that, but it's a really helpful and easy to read PDF file. And again, it's 100% free as a gift from me to you. Now, this video is already getting so long that I will actually have to make a part 4, even though I plan to make this only a 3 part video series. And in part 4, we will only focus on what you can do to potentially help speed up these brain changes we have been talking about in this video series. You can see that video on the screen right here. And if you can't see it yet, it just means I'm still working on it and it will be out in just a few days from now. So make sure to subscribe for that and I'll see you over there.